The Nazi claim that Germany had rockets which could bombard the United States was not far removed from actual achievement. Missiles capable of ranges up to 3,000 miles were in the design stage when Allied troops moved into Germany. The Vergeltungswaffe Zwei, or retaliation rocket, commonly known as the V-2, had more than 12,000 persons engaged in the project in Germany, including 1,500 scientists, engineers and technicians, and 8,000 special workers. Many technical difficulties peculiar to the field of ballistics and aerodynamics were encountered in the early stages of V-2 development, but in designing, producing, and using it, the Germans proved themselves to be well in advance of any other nation. No discussion on guided missiles can fail to note the economic aspects of this type of warfare and points emphatically to the nature of the next aerial conflict. A large number of V-2 rockets, complete and unassembled, were recovered by the Allies at the close of the war, and a goodly percentage of these were brought to our own research centers. These were rebuilt and modified at White Sands, where weather conditions for scientific research are ideal and where rocket launchings for meteorological and engineering observations are now being obtained and analyzed. With the speed of this rocket, the nearest approach to the speed of a meteor and its vertical range invading the spaces where northern lights waver and play their celestial game of tag, our research with data recording instruments and cameras will contribute much toward future developments deemed possible for mankind's penetration of the ionosphere. At the White Sands Proving Grounds in New Mexico, operated by the United States Army Ordnance Department in cooperation with the Army Air Force, the Navy, and many of our foremost technical institutions, the V-2 in recent tests has reached an altitude of well over 100 miles. The purpose of these modifications and tests at White Sands is to determine range, control, and relative data on this 12-ton guided missile. The engineering division laboratories at Wright Field are playing an important part in this research. Recently, their equipment laboratory developed a container installed with instruments and to be ejected from the warhead of a V-2 at the peak altitude and safely lowered to the ground by means of parachutes. In one end of the container, two parachutes are packed. First, an 18-foot ribbon cargo chute enclosed in a sleeve. Then a partition to which is fastened a small brake chute. This partition, when locked, is released by a timer 165 seconds after the smaller chute opens. The small chute is 8 feet in diameter and also of ribbon design. In the pressurized compartment end of the container, a spring-wound tensiometer records parachute shock forces. Other data is procured, a potentiometer recording the shock forces in terms of electrical energy, a radar beacon to record potentiometer readings and track the trajectory of the container, and a movie camera powered by dry cells. The container one half of which is packed with two chutes and a camera to photograph the functioning of the parachutes, and the other half a pressurized compartment housing data recording and signal instruments for tracking is inserted in a tunnel in the warhead. An explosive charge in the tunnel's breech plate is set to eject the container 145 seconds after fuel shutoff. This rocket, already declared obsolete as a weapon, with our modifications, now provides a new vehicle with which our scientists can explore the unknown and affording our upper air meteorologists a feast of research. For placing the missile in its launching attitude, one of the original German Mueller Wagens is used. But for servicing the added research instruments and equipment at several stations in the body of the missile, Army Ordnance Engineers developed the Gantry Tower approximating the framework of a five-story building on tracks. This device permits easy access for fueling, installation, adjustment and checking of all control equipment and data recording instruments. Fuel in the German V2 consists of calcium permanganate, hydrogen peroxide, alcohol and liquid oxygen, 
eight tons of it. This develops a maximum thrust of 68,000 pounds for 65 seconds, giving the rocket a maximum speed of 5,000 feet per second. With all servicing complete, the massive steel tower rolls back and the rocket is ready for firing. From inside the massive concrete blockhouse, test engineers count off the seconds before the big lift. Radio controls and radar tracking devices function clearly, and the flight of the missile is charted. Almost straight up into the ionosphere at a speed of 3,500 miles per hour. Then 145 seconds after fuel shutoff, the container is launched from the warhead. The movie camera and the parachute end of the container records the functioning of first the small brake chute. and 165 seconds later, the cargo chute. The container is safely lowered and recovered. By contrast, note the condition of not only the warhead after it was recovered, but the tangled mess that once was control devices of the rocket. Upon inspection, the container sustained only minor damage. The parachute, none at all. The data recording and tracking instruments are found intact. <laughs> 